every region can express something through the wines. Sometimes I suggest to, to friends, have a couple of bottles on the table, and then you can Google it, where these wines are coming from. So sitting around the table, you can actually do a trip of the world. That makes a wine very intriguing. Welcome to A Glass With. I'm Vanessa Conlin, Master of Wine and the Global Head of Wine Retail for Sotheby's. And it is a thrill to be sitting down today with Lamberto Frescobaldi, the president of Marchese Frescobaldi, 30th generation winemaker. The Frescobaldi family has been making wine for 700 years in Tuscany, making it one of the oldest winemaking families in all of Italy. So thank you so much, Lamberto, for being with me today. Thank you for having me. We have two wines from your family's estate today. There are many more than just two. How many estates is that are in the Frescobaldi dynasty? We are 14 of them. 12 in Tuscany, one in north of Italy, and one in Oregon. Let's start with the Rialzi. That is pretty new for, for our family. We stepped into this estate in 20. 14 in the central part of Tuscany in this area called Chianti Classico and a lovely interesting estate that is now over 200 acres of vineyard where the variety is San Giovese. Cheers Umberto. Cheers. So I'm curious then when you add new estates what are you looking for? Do, do you know it instantly? Do you fall in love with the place or does it take many years to understand it and know that it fits in the family profile? I love wine. I love what it is around the wine, the vineyards, the cellar, the people. The great thing about wine is that if it's done properly and respecting the area where it's produced, you it can tell you a great story each time. So why not to buy a new estate? Because you want a new story. That doesn't mean that in the old ones, you are somewhat forgetting them back. Absolutely not. Actually, there is starts to be a somewhat of a natural competition. So all of the estates kind of learn from one another, sort of push each other a little bit yeah. harder. Yeah, and it's very important what is in the glass, but it's also very important what is all around the glass. If we go to this estate, Perano, the scenery is just beautiful. The view is breathtaking. Wine is usually from beautiful places, great wine. And Tuscany is extremely beautiful, but what else is it about Tuscany that makes it such a fantastic growing region? You have the mountains all around Tuscany, so that it blocks the, the cold from the Siberia. And then you have the sea. You have many things. I must say that we are a little bit spoiled. Oregon, how did you fall in love with that property and decide to venture into America? Look, America is a little bit more opportunities rather than the old Europe. When we talk about global warming, it came pretty natural to go to look at uh, cooler places like Oregon. Oregon Pinot Noirs are really something. And Pinot Noir is a very tricky. Very finicky. It's never perfect. And that's the reason why you fall in love with it. It was really love at first sight. I can't wait to try it. As the 30th generation, how much flexibility did you have to change things um, versus staying traditional to what your family had always done? If you are very traditional, soon you're going to be read on a book because everybody's got a past in front of you. The past, it gives you respect of what you have and uh, that you do not want to lose what you have inherited. But uh, do not fall in love with the past. I am far more interested at in what is going to happen tomorrow. Well, I could talk to you all day, but that would be very selfish of me because you have many, many projects to manage and a lot of other people who I know would enjoy talking to you. So thank you so much. And I hope we can enjoy another glass together very soon. So Cheers. Thank you, Lamberto. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for your time.